When we first met Ralse, we just saw a lonely little prince of an empty kingdom, who spent his life waiting for the other heroes to arrive, and after that, just wanted to walk the path of kindness. Once we met him again in chapter 2 however, no one could deny that he has become shady. Not only does he have extensive knowledge of the light world, but he can also travel between dark worlds with no problem, and his private conversations with Chris are also getting suspicious. The clues we've gathered so far point towards one thing, that Ralse is Sans 2.0. But why is that? Where did he get his knowledge and power from? Why is the Kingdom of Darkness in its current state? What does this have to do with Gaster and the Skeleton Brothers, or the Knight's Mystery? We have a lot to uncover. But before we get started, here is a quick word from our sponsor. I wish to make a few things clear first. Delta Rune is an alternate timeline that operates by the same rules, not an alternate reality. By asking Father Alvin about the hammer, we learn that Gerson was buried the same way as monster funerals happened in Undertale. He turned to dust, they spread it on his hammer, so his essence may live on. Magic still exists in the light world, but it is forgotten. People seem to argue a lot about this, but the same kind of confusion was there in Undertale about humans not being able to use magic anymore, despite the fact that human mages created the barrier in the first place. They seem to have discarded it, while monsters stuck to their traditions. In this timeline, the war never happened, so the study of magic was lost over the centuries, and Toriel never learned how to use fire magic either. Humans still have a strong presence in this world, so they aren't nearly extinct. The little town is just a small community, not a blueprint for the rest of the light world. With the new save system, going back in time is no longer possible. In Undertale, being able to reset was the core of the story, but in Delta Rune, the effects of time traveling extend only to you. No one notices if you reload a save file, not Chris, not anyone else. What they do notice, is if you did something in another save file. That's right, this story is about parallel universes, that can affect each other in the present, and by erasing a save file, you only give up your grip on that particular timeline. The canonical ending of Undertale is the one you got for yourself. If the characters at the end of the game were happy, they still are. This means whatever happened after Frisk fell into the underground kingdom, doesn't matter. But whatever happened before that moment, does matter. And by that, I mean the Gaster incident. The split between the two timelines did lead some characters on different paths, like Gerson becoming a historian and writer instead of the legendary warrior we know from Undertale, but Gaster became a scientist simply because he wanted to, so his experiment probably happened in all timelines. The experiment that split him across time and space. But if that happened to all of his versions, then the pieces eventually became one again, with the knowledge about everything that happened in the timeline so far. Before we start to analyze Ralsei's behavior, we must first talk about how others treat him. The mob simply looked at him as one of the Delta Warriors, and after they were recruited, he became their ruler. The Spades and Susie in Chapter 1 and even Birdly to some extent in Chapter 2 laughed at him, treating him as a joke, while Noel and Queen didn't even acknowledge his existence until they were forced to. Chris is the most special case, because they were comrades from the beginning, but there is certainly some distance between them, while Susie now likes him a lot. Ralse certainly isn't like he was born from some kind of wish from Chris to see Asriel again, and he is also the only Darkner to be an alternate version of a Lightner, instead of an object's manifestation. This gets even more interesting when we get a clue that the monster from the prophecy isn't Susie. It's most likely Asriel, who is returning from college at the end of the game. Coincidence? I think not! Time to explain why I think Ralse is similar to Sans. First, they have the same powers. Portals through space and time, shortcuts, only they know of, and they are both wizards, but Sans uses illusion instead of enchanting. They also both encourage pacifist runs, but don't deny that there are other options. However, despite both being aware of our presence, their methods differ from each other. Ralsei's approach is rather unprofessional. He is shifty, trying to communicate with us while pretending to speak with Chris. He is vague and naive, he even hides presumably important information, and if it becomes evident that you chose the evil route, he becomes confused and goes in denial. Sans on the other hand not only lets you know that he won't allow that, but also in the other routes he is deliberate, honest, and talks directly to the player. Of course he doesn't want to take Frisk's soul at any point, because he knows it's not worth trying. 
He just wants to make a specific point, that you should be nice to the monsters, that you should be grateful to your allies, that you should show mercy. He never says it, but he knows how to push you towards the pacifist route, and the best possible ending. There are also the goners who we now know are made by Gaster. They seem to be artificial beings created for simple purposes. What is the purpose of our vessel? At first I thought it was born to be a knight, who created the Grand Fountain and that is what makes it different from the impure ones, but the Kingdom of Darkness clearly has a history beyond this particular timeline. Recently I figured something more likely out. I think the vessel might be the game's narrator, like Kara was in Undertale. Different from Chris, different from the player, has a unique style of talking, and can be corrupted by the evil root. It is also very likely that Ralse is Gaster's ally, since he has a lot of knowledge, but no experience, and he named the town after us etc. With the save points being dedicated to Chris, and our cell phone being connected to him in the dark world, it is safe to assume that Gaster wants Chris to be the human hero in the story, and he made the prophecy in the first place. So what is this new experiment? With lines like, only they can seal the fountains, or, only then will balance be restored, it seems that he knows what will happen, because he already saw the heroes succeed in a different world, and also saw them fail in another. Before Chapter 2 came out, Two Left Thumbs made a video about Sans possibly being a darkener. If you want to see more details, I recommend checking it out. But one odd detail is that he couldn't find the lightener version of Sans or the darkener version of Papyrus. If my theory is correct, then the other versions weren't missing, because Sans is the darkener version of Papyrus. Oh no 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 no, don't look at me like that. Stay with me, because I think this was intentional on Toby's behalf. On the current team we have Azriel, Ralse, who is a darkener version of him and whose name is an anagram for Azriel, and Chris. On the other team we have Papyrus, who is Gaster's son and can only speak in his own font. Sans. The prince from the dark who can only speak in Sans fonts like Comic Sans, Liberation Sans etc. And an alternate version of Chris who was a close friend to them. But the reason why they are in their current state, mentally broken and bound to Gaster's experiments, is because they failed to save their own world, because they were betrayed by the human. Sans even admits during his boss fight that he tried to go back, but gave up. Just listen to this dialogue. All I know is, seeing what comes next, I cannot afford not to care anymore. I always thought this anomaly was because they were unhappy. Don't say I didn't warn you. He tries to push you back on the right path, because he knows what happens when the angel gets stronger. He knows what happens when the human, who was supposed to be the hero of the story, becomes evil. There are also a lot of hints in Undertale that Papyrus is mentally ill. He is a really nice guy and everybody likes him, but he is also immature. He seems to know a lot, but has trouble recalling specific memories, and also has a hard time acknowledging someone's death. He probably suffers from a severe trauma, and even if not consciously, but he still tries to talk some sense into you to stay off the evil path. To summarize this theory, Ralse is the latest of many dark princes, whose purpose is to shelter and guide the darkners before the roaring, and to ultimately save the world with his light world counterpart and their human friend. He is also well informed thanks to Gaster, but ultimately he is just a rookie with a huge burden on his shoulders. And I guess the ultimate goal of the experiment is to save as many worlds as possible. In Undertale the Gaster followers don't appear in a genocide run, and if you do the same in Deltarune, he doesn't give you the second egg. He is no longer on your side willing to support you. I guess in the end there will be more than one ending. Either by Noel's power flying out of control, or the vessel getting corrupted, the evil route will end with the Titans destroying yet another world, and the cycle beginning anew once again. That took longer than I expected. I don't even have a clear suspect in the Knight's case, since I couldn't find any useful information. There is clearly a larger mystery going on in this town, and we will talk about how I think it will unfold in the next video, which will be about the game's mechanics, patterns, and in the center of all that.